Happy Wednesday. What an intense 24 hours. What an intense season. You name it. We've been through it this season. Um, in the last hour, we saw that Dominique Duchamp has been relieved of his duties as head coach for the Montreal Canadiens. It's been, uh, how can I say this? I guess, I guess about 50, 50 kind of emotions mm -hmm. for a lot of fans. A lot of people are disappointed. A lot of people don't blame him. You've got a fan base. That's just above and beyond fed up with everything that's happened. So Let's yeah. talk what happened. Let's begin with, uh, again, Dominique Duchamp relieved of his duties in the last hour. What's what's next? Do we assume that we're going to have an interim coach for the rest of the season? Are we finding a coach right now? What do you boys think? What are your emotions with this news? Yeah, um, I, I'd just like to begin by saying a thank you to Dominique Duchamp. I doubt he's watching. Yeah. But anyways, I'd still like to yeah. thank him because he did contribute to us you know, having that playoff run uh, last season, whether you like it or not. Okay. He was a factor in that. So thank you for that. Um, you know, he helped turn the team around after uh, taking over from Claude Julien, which was going nowhere. And then I guess it's still going nowhere, <laughs> nowhere with him, but uh, that's no longer the case. I think, you know, it was bound to happen. Like, let's be honest, uh, uh, eight wins, after half the season has passed is unacceptable no matter the, con the the conditions like we understand that there's been injuries there's been covid everything bad that could happen happened this season but it's still like unacceptable you see the decisions he's taken you see the way guys the players have been acting have have lost kind of their passion a bit it's the coach's job to to keep that to maintain that and he really hasn't done it so I'm surprised that it was this early, but also not surprised at all. I can comp completely agree. The thing is I found with Dom is that a lot of players couldn't build chemistry under the way he had a system. And I do give him the benefit of the doubt that this team's had COVID outbreaks and so many injuries. We have the most man games lost in the NHL, but eventually you got to leave certain players with certain players to build chemistry on lines and defensive pairings. But it's just gone to the point where even the veterans have spoken out. Jake Allen, we know, said wanted to see the kids more. We know Jeff Petrie said that he wanted to see the kids more. Brennan Gallagher said that he's had tr troubles adapting after he lost his two big line mates and Phil Deneau and Thomas Tatar. By the way, Thomas Tatar had a nice comb coming yesterday with that goal. <laughs> he did. <sighs> Just a little extra pinch, you know? Yeah, that uh, hurt. But I believe also it's it's a matter of pride, right? It's, it's a difference if you're seeing effort every single night from everybody and the outcome is just not working, which is a way I don't mind losing. I mean, don't get me wrong. I hate losing. I don't like seeing my team going into a slump. But if you see some effort and you just lost, you could at least have a moral victory of, hey, this went right. But mm -hmm. right now, we've given up 33 goals in the past five games. It's a slaughter every single night. There's not much positivity or habsativity, as we say, that's been coming out of of these games. So it's a matter of like, what, what was the other solution right now? I mean, I yeah. know we're, everybody's saying we're tanking, we're tanking, we're tanking. You've got Brendan Gallagher who even acknowledged yesterday that, you know, nobody wants to lose. Nobody's going to purposely tank. Dale has acknowledged it in the first, uh, first time we did the shows as well. So it's a matter of trying to, I, I don't even know. <laughs> it, it, it had to be done. It was a long time coming. Uh, unfortunately it's, in the first year of his contract, we still have to pay him for two more years. We're still paying Claude Julien. We're still paying Marc Bergevin until the end of the season. So 
it sucks. It is what it is. But let's talk about uh, interim coaches. So the announcement today said that an interim coach would be made in the next few hours. We don't have mm -hmm. any details right now. We do have our Twitters open. And if you guys see something in the chat, feel free to post it and spam us with the new info. So what do you guys think? Is Luke Richardson going to be named as interim coach as he was previously? Or are we going with a completely different vision and hiring a coach right now? Yeah. If I'm going to give my honest opinion, my honest prediction, I believe that Trevor Latowski is going to take over interim coach for the rest of the season. I don't see Kent Hughes hiring a new coach, knowing that you're already paying, like you said, Claude Julien and now Dominique Duchamp. It yeah. doesn't make sense to pay three coaches at the same time. So just put Latowski as interim. He's the assistant coach. Leave Richardson for the defense. Burroughs attack. I think you don't really change the other coaches that's my prediction it's boring i know you guys want patrick <laughs> why you want you know Gibouche and all that but that's that's just the reality of the things like it it financially doesn't make sense um and you know why bring in a new coach into a poor situation like that um i i don't think it's it's worth hiring a new coach right now I definitely think Richardson, I think, would be worth it because a lot of the guys in the locker room seem to respect him. And he did a really good job, especially in the playoff run when he became the interim coach. And I definitely think Richardson is uh, still coaching to, in a way to help the young players pl play if he's going to be named interim coach. As I'm sure we know in the playoffs when we had uh, Dom had COVID, we saw how well the youngsters played because Dom actually gave them a good opportunity. Caulfield was on fire. Suzuki was on fire. We know in the playoffs, this team runs on magic, but I do believe that part of the reason why the youngsters haven't been as good is because Dom hasn't played them as much as, uh, in my opinion, I believe he shouldn't. I do believe Richardson will give them that chance they deserve. So let's, uh, let's speculate here because mm -hmm. we have nothing else to do. Um, well. my question for you boys is, would you rather have an interim coach or do you believe that Kent Hughes and Jeff Gordon should completely clear the bench and start from new? Because whether we like it or not, defensive wise, it hasn't been strong all season. So it mm -hmm. hasn't only been Dominique Duchamp's fault. So would you rather clean the bench, start new, or are we putting an interim coach waiting until the end of the season and then cleaning slate starting next season. What's your opinion on that? Whew, it's a tough call. Because For the fans like, too, leave us comments yeah. on what you guys think. This is kind of like an unprecedented situation. No, never in the Habs history have we been this bad. Yeah. And with, with the COVID stuff, stuff and, and injuries and all that, like, I don't know what to do. I don't think anybody knows what to do, right? But the thing is, like, it was pretty clear that Dominic Ducham didn't have the room anymore. And then no matter what, you know, Richardson can tell you guys. Uh, he's he, not going to he flat out say it, right? Media, yeah, no, he, he, nobody's going to say it that he lost the room. But he definitely did. I mean, Petrie said there's no system. You know, Josh Anderson doesn't want to. Uh, he doesn't have joy coming into the rink. Like, you can tell he just he lost the guys. So that I can understand. But clearing every other coach, I'm not sure about that. Uh, I like Burroughs as uh, power play. Uh, I think I think the power play improved tremendously when he took over from um, who was there before Kirk Muller. Kirk Muller, yeah. And yeah. and defensively, yeah, it's not pretty. But I I wouldn't put most of the blame most of the blame on Richardson. I think he's done a fine job. And and from what we hear from the players, he's actually a really fun coach to be around and, and like yeah. cares for the players. Um, so I, I think just. Put, putting Latowski or Richardson as interim for now is is enough. And in the summer, we actually will Kent Hughes and Jeff Gordon, Jeff Molson will actually have time to roll out an actual process of hiring. Like, okay, if you want to hire a, an actual coach, then you kind of do the same thing as you did with Kent Hughes, have a slate of candidates and interview them, and you know take your time instead of you know doing it too quickly and hiring somebody. Yeah, completely agreed. But one question I do have is I wonder if uh, Jeff Gordon, I wouldn't be surprised if it's already a head coach he has in mind because Jeff Gordon's been here since 
the end of November, correct me if I'm wrong there, but I'm pretty sure since the end of November, Gorton got the job and Gorton was probably planning it out. Well, let's say he wanted to bring in David Quinn from New York. I personally wouldn't be a fan of that because we saw that Quinn wasn't the best with the youngsters in New York, such as Capo Caco and Alexi Lafreniere, but maybe he found another guy that he wants, or maybe he was already planning to uh, find a replacement for Dom because he knew that the system wasn't working with the players we already had. So mm-hmm. I would definitely think that uh, I would not be surprised if it's a full-time permanent head coach that's uh, going to come in here and fill out the rest of the season and then coach later on in the future. But I personally hope it's a head coach, a, a permanent one that will uh, get to know the players this season, especially the youngsters. And then when next season rolls around, they can have a full year with the team and then things will hopefully be better by then. We have, as an organization, a little bit of a habit of being a recycle bin when it comes to head coaches. As you know, we brought back Michel Terrier, we brought back Claude Julien. The only one who has not been back would be Alain Vigneault. And guess who's available? Ah. Alain Vigneault. Mark my words. But uh, I'm not saying it's my first choice. I'm just saying mark my words. I um, want to get you guys' thoughts on if you had a choice. We've named some names previously in this in this video, but... Who do you have in mind when it comes to a new head coach? We've talked about bilingualism Mm -hmm. many times, and we saw how much of an issue it was with uh, Kent Hughes being named just because he has an English name. Apparently, it's not good enough. So where are your thoughts? What's your head at when it comes to a new coach? You've got thoughts of Bob Hartley, uh, uh, Guy Boucher. uh, Mm -hmm. I'm going to let you guys speculate. I want to get your thoughts and the chat's thoughts as well on who would you guys like to see behind the bench? That's right. Um, my God, just, just saying Alain Vigneault's name gives me the heebie-jeebies. I cannot Imagine stand Gallagher. that guy. I cannot stand that guy. After It really it sparked after uh, the, the Gallagher comments when he got ran into the boards, yeah. broke his jaw. And he blamed Gallagher. Like, how stupid can you be? I get you want to defend your player, but come on, there's there's limits, right? So no chance he gets hired. If he does, I might stop being a fan of this team. Like, this, this would be ridiculous. But um, speaking on a more realistic note. Um, Sorry, just comment. That's actually worse. That's actually worse than Vigneault. <laughs> that guy, <laughs> he's got to have some mental issues. Like, he's not there. All, like, he's not completely there. But... Um, <laughs> Patrick Roy is interesting. Uh, probably not my first choice, yeah. but if you're looking at a coach that can actually like whip up the players into shape and like actually lead them, be motivational, get them to come to want to come to the rink and give it their all, he might be that guy. Now his yeah. tactics sometimes might be unconventional. Maybe he won't get along with everybody, and that might turn out to be a problem. But if you want somebody with character, more character than Jusham, because he was, you know. A uh, towel, basically, but Dale, I would love that. I would love that. Great suggestion. But um, I don't know. <laughs> Patrick Roy is always an interesting choice. Whenever there's a position open in the Habs, he's, his name is circulating. <laughs> um, no, not Joel no. Bouchard. If you haven't seen our video, we actually Thank you. made a video with Dale explaining why he is not a good coach, actually. Um, and, and, you know, if we want to Dale, keep Dale saw it firsthand. So I yeah, mean, you guys it. go watch it and he'll give you the proper explanation as to why we're not just speaking out of our hats here. So that's that's a hell no. But um, I, I wouldn't mind Guy Boucher as well. I think Bob Hartley is almost out of the question because he's settled in Russia. He loves his mm-hmm. team. His team loves him. I don't think we were able to snag him from there. So I think Guy Boucher would be like the likeliest candidate. But uh, it's up in the air. I don't know. I also just want to touch on Vigneault for a second because I've always found there's always been an interesting personality to Vigneault. We always know that uh, he defends his players when it's kind of indefensible in my mind. I remembered when the Chris Kreider play happened, he said, oh, that's a good hockey play. I remember he said that to the media right after the game. And then I remember there was the whole Brandon Prost thing versus Daniel Carcillo. And then he was like going like crapping all over Brandon Prost. And then... I remembered, uh, he, I remembered uh, he was crapping on Kirk Muller when Claude Julien had to leave the bubble for uh, med- medical purposes. And then he was saying, yeah, I don't like how they had their top power play out there. In game one of, of the 2014 game against the Rangers, he did that when they were up 7-1. Yeah. He had the top power play out there. And I'm thinking, where are your morals, buddy? So, yeah, and also what yeah. happened with Gallagher, that would definitely be heated locker room. So I'd just say, Niet. 
I just saying yeah. Soviet. <laughs> yeah. 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 But totally. the guy um, who I really like is uh, Ben Olivier, uh, Benoit Olivier Gru. Um, yeah. uh, because uh, he's definitely a good coach. He coached in the World Juniors. He's currently co- coaching for Syracuse right now. I don't, I don't, there's no word whether he left the team yet. So it's probably more just me hoping that he'd be the next coach because he's good with a lot of players. And nobody forget that he was responsible for the development mainly of Eric Chernak and Anthony Sorelli, who have done a really good job with Tampa and being regular players. So mm-hmm. that, those are definitely the guys that uh, I would think, like I definitely think Ben Wallace would be a perfect head coach. Not bad. But if we're saying, uh, again, speculating Benoit Olivier Guru, uh, let's say the Habs are doing a rebuild. Would you want to go with a brand new coach who doesn't have the NHL experience? Or do you want to go with somebody that's more of a veteran inside the league to develop a new team and work with that rebuild? Because we just went with Dominique Jam, who had no prior, like he was an assistant coach. Yes, he had a great record when it came to juniors, but... When it came to leading an NHL team, you could saw that there was a little bit of lacking in experience. So Mm -hmm. is that something that we're ready to go through again? Or I see a lot of the chat is, I know he doesn't speak French, but again, speculating, Paul Maurice. Would you go with a guy like Paul Maurice over uh, pierre Elie Grou? Yeah. What about that aspect? I actually am not a fan of Paul Maurice. That might be a hot take, but I really didn't like Who do you like, Shane? Jesus. Uh... (laughs) (laughs) few guys, actually, a few guys, but uh, John Cooper, I feel, is an amazing coach. But anyways, Paul Maurice, I was not a fan of the way he handled his team. Uh, maybe a good coach in the room, but what he did with his lines, I, I don't know. He just, I never really uh, got behind it. Uh, but I like your point, though, asking about, you know, if we want an experienced coach or a, new, a newcomer to the NHL, I think we might go the experienced route because, like yeah. you said, it's it's a rebuild coming. We have so many young guys and more coming as well that we kind of need that that voice of, of reason and that experience to really um, put the guys in line and, and give them a, a good vision. Uh, but we don't know what to expect. We don't know what to expect. I don't know. Yeah, I Sorry, my agree. dogs are going ballistic two seconds. That's okay. We, li- we all like dogs here. <laughs> Yeah, like exactly. Like the thing is, I definitely believe is that uh, the thing with Paul Maurice is uh, he's, of course, a good coach, but uh, I do know he wasn't the most popular in uh, Toronto. And like there was a lot of line changes in Winnipeg, in my opinion, on paper should have easily have been a playoff team this year in their division. Yeah, but uh, I don't know if, if he was mainly the main cause. So they had to get Adam Lowry's dad to coach the team this season. So <laughs> Yeah, that's the part that I find funny. They got Adam Lowry's dad of all people to coach the team. <laughs> okay. This is true. My dogs have a lot of opinions. They want to get on. hear them, though. <laughs> um, let's talk. Okay, so we speculated about who would be coach and everything. I want to just go back to yesterday because there's been a lot of talk over the past few games on uh, it's a pride thing right now because we, we knew that it's not going well. But for me, it's pride. So... Mm. You've got comments uh, from Josh Anderson. I want to touch on him quickly. He is so uh, mature and a leader when it comes to press conference. I absolutely love the way that he expresses himself when it comes to what happened and what's going on in his head because he speaks the truth, but he doesn't, he's not disrespectful about it. So last night after losing seven to one to the devils who were on a seven or six game streak, Seven. Of loss seven yeah. there you go even better <laughs> and having played 24 hours before against the ottawa senators basically ransacked us and uh you know gave us a taste of our own medicine so he flat out says i'm embarrassed mm-hmm. it's not fun to come to the games anymore um i don't know we're getting to collecting collecting effort from everybody so are comments like that a little bit of a jab towards the head coach or a jab towards the players it's a tough call, you know, because obviously we're all rooting for, for the, the tank, right? We want the high pick and you know, that's the only consolation prize from a, from a terrible season. Um, But there is a fine line between tanking and creating a bad culture. If you look at Buffalo, they've been terrible for like a lifetime. It's, it's crazy because they have a bad culture there. They have, they don't have a winning culture and you know, Obviously, like like I said, we want to tank, but if we play like that, whereas there's just no no heart, no will to actually win or try to win, 
then we're going to be the next Buffalo. I'm sorry. That's, that's just the way we're trending right now. So I guess the, the sham firing also uh, tries to prevent that, you know, tries to change the culture. Hopefully um, I'm not saying that we should, we need to win every single game for the rest of the season. No, I'm, I'm, I'm on board. I'm on board with the tank. Like I want Shane Wright, like everybody else, but there is, there does need to be a change of culture, especially for the younger guys who, you know, the, the, the that's, how they're exposed to, you know, that they're exposed to losing like that. They won't have that pride to wear the logo. Um, so I think it, it was very important to have a change of culture here. Yeah, exactly. At this point, we just got to play for pride and go out there and show our best effort because right now we know where we're at as a team. We know that uh, it's very difficult to play. And also we've noticed that uh, upset. I'm again upset because the Pez dispenser was scratched last game and same with the pit looker as well. So those guys have been playing for pride. They've been playing really well. And then other veterans, I don't want to use names, haven't been working as hard and uh, they, they're still in the lineup essentially. And Oh, you can call them out. It's fine. Mm-hmm. We're yeah, not trashing just, them. We're just calling yeah. them out. Yeah. I mean, I found Armia wasn't really working out, working as hard. And uh, like, at least he got an assist yesterday, but I found for like pretty much like most of the season, he hasn't really been playing up to the standard that we know he's very much capable of. I don't know if there's some sort of underlying in- injury there, or if he's just not motivated, but yeah. I found Armia was not playing to the level that we know he's capable of. And I find consistency, uh, right? Yeah, inconsistency. <laughs> oh yeah. My God. And I just also find Mike Hoffman is more waiting for the puck out there instead of trying to get the puck and do uh, do uh, good things in both ends, such as playing defense. We know what Mike Hoffman is. We know he's offensive, pure goal scorer and uh, not very responsible defensively. But I'm just not seeing the effort right now. I feel that he's just sometimes waiting for the power play and then just wants to wait and get his opportunity just to rip it on net. But I just find that other guys are working harder and there's more competition now and and these guys really need to uh, step it up. And I found Cole Caulfield especially had a really good game last night. He was moving around with the puck, great energy. And I find it weird that he's still not on the first power play unit right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that was one of my surprises yesterday when it came to to the lineup releases for the special units. I mean, I agree with what you're saying with Mike Hoffman, but he's the type of guy right now that generates your power play and that has the most chances. And he's on the second wave. Why is he not on the first wave? And especially with Caulfield, you know, it, it's, it's little decisions like that, that make me question the system. That's one, that's the other subject I want to touch on is the system. So we've got mm-hmm. Dominic Sham yesterday in his presser saying, we're putting the system out there where it's just not work, but if it's not working, why aren't we changing it? And I've throughout the whole season have not seen a system. I don't know what yeah. he's talking about. It's lacking. So if you're, so-called system is not working uh try something else yeah oh, one for sure <laughs> like i exactly here what system it's been a common question all season long so yeah come and dominic Ducham, that was one comment that stuck with me when he came in as coach for uh, claude julien he said the message is the same and the system is the same it's going to be a different execution if you're going to hire a new coach, if you're going to try to change something, why would you stick to the same system? Why not try a different system, try something else? So that's what I'm hoping to see with a new coach at this point, whether it's this season or next season. I want to see some changes when it comes to this system that we keep talking of. It's clearly not working. A different voice will not change things at this point. So what do you guys think of that? Yeah, I mean... The, the like like we said the system was non-existent there it was just okay uh you guys go on the ice you know you, you guys try try to do something it, it was like it, that's not how an nhl team is run um yeah the, the, there needs to be a coach and and like i mentioned before i would love a coach that has sorry to say it but more balls you know have a have a spine really stand up yeah. and and put some um accountability on your players and make it fun too. I mean, I, I'm, from what I could tell from Dushalm, I really wouldn't want to play for him. Seems like a boring guy. Seems like a guy that doesn't ex- inspire confidence. I want a guy that really motivates me, makes me want to run through a wall. You know, uh, that, that a coach, a, a coach. That's what we need. And he was never a coach. This guy was just there behind the bench saying stuff. It's too bad. 
you know, I'm sure he's a nice yeah. guy, but it really wasn't working. And and we need some guy or somebody, maybe, maybe a female, eh? We haven't thought about that. Maybe it can be a woman. I'm not opposed to that at all. Kim St. Pierre? Some, somebody with Kim a spine, Saint please. Kim St. freaking Pierre. Yeah. I would love Instead that. Instead of balls, it's tits. There you go. <laughs> somebody with tits. Oh, my God. Terrible. Without being sexist. Um, yeah. Damon, what do you think? I definitely think that it would be great hire to hire someone like Kim St. Pierre because... I definitely think that under Ducharme, especially like the culture, it was not good. And also the system. So I remembered watching part of Ben Sherratt's post game and Ben Sherratt just like he was being asked. I'm pretty sure it was Eric Engels who asked him about uh, the defensive system. And he's like, yeah, like uh, we kind of just want to go out there and uh, we want to prevent the puck from going to the back of the net, but it just doesn't seem to be working. Like that was pretty much Ben Sherratt in the post game. It's like, it's like he uh, the thing is that they should just say you know what they should do like we need to get more closer to the goalies because looking back i watched a lot of the replays caden primo barely even had a chance to stop the rebounds because the defense wasn't there to tie up the sticks block the shots or get in front of the forwards yeah like that's definitely the thing like they were leaving primo and uh monty out to dry essentially and the defense really needs to do a lot more but yeah i just think kim st pierre also now that i'm thinking about a woman coach as well would be a perfect hire Yep. Uh, speaking of coaches, another position where I think we're lacking a little bit of, I don't want to say experience, but oomph, I guess, would be a goalie coach. Ever yeah. since we let Stefan Waite go, um, I don't even know who our goalie coach is right now. Sean That's Burke. Much. Is it Sean Burke? I'm pretty sure Sean Burke. There you go. There's my knowledge. Um what would you guys think of having another uh, goalie coach coming in, especially if you don't get Carey Price back this season or at all? Because there's still that possibility due to that press conference that we heard last week. What are your mm -hmm. thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I don't know who's available, right? I'm not uh, too familiar with goalie coaches, who's who's good, who's not. Um, it's really up to uh, Kent Hughes and Jeff Gorton. But if, if there is somebody available, you know, you clearly – the Sean Burke experience has not worked. So there you go. Eric Raymond experience has not worked. Um, if there's somebody else out there that could help, uh, why not? <laughs> go for yeah. it. Not opposed. Like we need it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one thing I've also thought about is uh, more of a modern day one. I remembered uh, on our game five poster in the post game show in the Stanley Cup finals, I remembered it was DeLeo who was talking about uh, the, the pad change that uh, Sean Burke got Carey Price to undergo throughout the season and the equipment change, and it ended up working out really well. And mm -hmm. I definitely think we need someone more in the modern day game. Who I can't think of a specific goalie coach that I want right now. Marty Broder would be a good one. But to me, Marty Broder strikes me as more of a GM type or head coach. Yeah. Businessy. Yeah, it seems very businessy. And uh, he's he was the GM of Team Canada in the 2018 World Championship. So I definitely think he'd want to be more of a GM instead of just a goalie coach. But yeah. if they were going to have a goalie coach, you definitely want one who's more modern day, understands all the new equipment and uh, get, understands the new stances and can help out with the modern day game because the game is ever changing so fast. It's getting faster. A lot more players are blocking shots. So definitely want more of a modern day goalie coach, but I can't think of one off the top of my head. Um, again, speculating, how do we think the players are going to react to this move? Do we expect, what are the next few games look like? So depending mm -hmm. again on who the interim coach is, or if the actual official coach is being hired, um, do we expect a little bit of a change when it comes to the effort on the ice, or are we expecting the same amount of crap happening for the rest of the season and then it's a brand new season next year yeah i mean no doubt this season's a write-off like nobody's gonna remember it well not for the good reasons at least but um you know the guys i feel are just thinking about the future what's to come uh i i, I would be if i were in that situation i really wouldn't you know it's sad to say but i'm thinking okay next year how are we how are we going to be good um yeah. and it all starts with the coaching change uh, it was going to happen regardless if it was now or this summer. Now, at least the guys know that Kent Hughes and Jeff Gorton are in it. OK, they want the team to succeed. They want to give the players a chance to have a good coach and, and whatever they need to succeed. So I'd be happy.
but I don't think it's going to change much for this season. I don't think it much will change this season, but depending on the se- in the system that the new coach implements, I'm sure we know D- Ducharme's system just didn't work, but if the new coach decides this is the kind of system we're going for, because as I'm sure we know that Ducharme, when it was successful is the key word here, it was pretty defensive, and it ended up uh, working out a lot in our favor, especially in the playoffs, but this season it really just, as I'm sure we all know, hasn't worked out. But if we end up getting a new coach who's just uh, much more... Uh, much more in line with the players. You sort of see, I, I sort of do a booth, booth barbecue Bruce, as I like to call him, does in Vancouver. Yeah. Uh, if he does uh, what he did in Vancouver and then just uh, gets the players going back to what they've been doing and uh, can get them more into a positive rhythm. Because especially in Vancouver, things have been much more positive since Bruce Boudreaux became their head coach. And Brock Besser hasn't been scoring much there before when Travis Green was uh, starting out there this season. And then once he got uh, relieved of duties, Travis Green. Brock Bester started scoring more and uh, because Bruce Boudreaux put him in more of a shooting lane position on the power play and hopefully something such as that could happen with Caulfield. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I definitely think that's definitely the key to get a coach who uh, understands the player's strengths and uh, will put them in positions that they know will put them in a good morale area. And then they'll uh, be able to get the pucks and put them in the back of the net and then get good development this year. And uh, as I'm sure we know, the season's a write-off. So have a nice summer and then get back going to to next year. I want to talk a little bit about the players right now too. So You've got got the lineup is so uncertain every single night. We did know that the lines were constantly changing. Uh, Players are being scrapped, putting back in. We talked yesterday, Damon, especially about having Michael Pizzetta and uh, Ren Picklick that were scratched from the lineup, which are the two guys, in my personal opinion, that have been giving their 110% every single shift. So I was a little bit disappointed to see that they were not even in to start off with. Um, I want to touch on. Guys like Cole Caulfield, who had an awesome game last night, it's just not going Mm -hmm. in for him. With a new coach coming in, hopefully a new system again, do we see Cole Caulfield as somebody who we want to keep on the team right now with a new mentality? Or would you guys send him back to Laval to gain the experience and maybe go for a Calder? Yeah. I mean, it seems like Laval would be the the smart way. But looking at yesterday's game made me think twice okay maybe because he was paired with 22 and armia and it was actually a good line they were the the fourth line line and they were the least used okay they had the least amount of ice time out of any line even though they were the best uh but anyways that guy's gone now so it's okay um but you know if if he's in a situation where okay he can get steady line mates good ice time good power play time I don't know. Like NHL experience is is invaluable, but again, in Laval, it would be you know absolutely he's on the first line, first power play, everything. You know, he's getting the most minutes. He would be able to grow there. It all depends on the new coach. Uh, let's wait and see. We'll know later today who it is, uh, what their plans are for Caulfield, what Kent Hughes's plans are for, for, for Caulfield. I feel like there needs to be some meetings to know where he stands, what he wants. Uh, because the players should have a say in, in his development as well. Uh, but yeah. my opinion, I'd, I'd still go Laval. I'd still go Laval. I agree with that. Like, in my opinion, here's what it, kind of what I would do with uh, Caulfield, as I'm sure we know the season's, of course, right up in Laval. With regarding all the injuries, they're still managing just to be a fringe playoff team. They're hanging around that eight, seven, nine spot in the conference. And and even with, if they had a fully healthy roster, they'd probably be sort of in a more, more uh, confirmed playoff position in this point, in my opinion. And yeah, here's what I do specifically with Caulfield. I would uh, sit him down and I would say, like, if I'm Kent Hughes, I'd just say, we know things aren't going well up here for the team. And uh, we do know that uh, it's a big struggle up here. And, uh, and over in Laval, we do know that you do play better there. And also we want you to have a chance at a Calder cup. We, we saw how good you were in the Stanley cup playoffs and we know you'll be good on the Calder cup run and just sit him down and try not to shatter his conference. Just try to tell him to, confidence. I should rather say, and just, then just get him to uh, go to Laval, play top line minutes. And also thinking, why not do that with uh, paling too? Because paling's waiver exempt and those two can just go on a monster run down there. And mm-hmm. uh, one other thing, thing I thought about is, as I'm sure we know, Primo's been playing in the NHL level. Once McNiven gets healthy, in my opinion, what I would do is I'd 
make make, uh, make McNiven the backup to pre on uh, Montembeau and then yeah. have Primo down there starting games, getting good games in, and then we and then get finishing up. I wouldn't say finishing up his development, but getting more to uh, proper development down there in Laval with Primo, and then sort of have Laval in a secured playoff role with uh, those guys getting really good ice time and uh, heavy minutes. Well, you have a bit more of the expiring veterans such as Laurent Dolphin and then Mike Pizzetta is continuing to work hard up here. And I do think that he's having some success. So I definitely would keep him up here for a bit, but if we make the playoffs, I would send Pizzetta back down there to Laval to be a part of that run as well. Yeah, and depending yeah. on who else gets healthy, because I do know Drew is out. Uh, I think long, t- I think long term. I do think he might make a return before the season, but he yeah, was skating we... this morning, so yeah. that's a a little bit I... more promising. Um, I want to touch on this comment here, and maybe we can uh, speculate again. So, is the team showing off potential trade pieces and causing our valuable players to lose ice time? So. That's a great question and something we should discuss. We've seen a lot of players on the team that obviously are not having a great season. We've spoken about Armia. There's obviously Jeff Petrie. Uh, We've spoken about Brett Kulak in the past as well. So uh, anybody else come to mind when it comes to maybe putting them on the ice? uh, Primo, who do you guys think is being shown off right now? And let's talk a little bit about trade bait and uh, trade deadline coming up. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, Kulak yesterday uh, bumped up his trade value, so I like that. I was pretty happy. <laughs> From a fourth um, to a third? Uh, you know, maybe a second. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's go, Kent. But, flat uh, top. <laughs> flat no, that's it. Flat top. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, we, could, we could definitely do something good with him. Uh, he's he's a guy that I feel could be an, like an underrated addition to contender, like a, a third pairing defenseman that can take up some minutes. Uh, you know, you, you know what you're going to get out of him. It's not flashy. It's not amazing, but it's still reliable. So uh, you, I'd, I'd definitely be OK letting him go. And then the the whole Charat Petrie thing, uh, for a while, it seemed like Charat was a sure thing. He's gone. Chow bye. Yeah. But then with Petrie, it's like, oh, wait a minute. Do we really want to let go both of them? You know, or it's it's one or the other. It's neither. Like, I don't know. I really don't know. It it really depends on the offers that yeah. those guys get. If some team offers, you know, the moon for Jeff Petrie, I mean, like, there you go. <laughs> Have a nice one. But then then if we trade Jeff Petrie, do we keep Ben Sherratt? I'm Absolutely. not opposed to that. If he wants to sign in Montreal, I would keep him. He's a vet. He knows how to play. He's a first pairing guy. Uh, so I wouldn't mind that whatsoever. And then flip side is if we trade Sherratt, do we keep Petrie or do we ship them both? That defensive situation is, is pretty crazy. Well, we've got a lot of guys coming up too defensive wise. So Damon, yes. I want to touch on that yes. quickly because I know you're really eligible when it comes to prospects. What do you think? If we, if we let go of both, do we have enough backup coming back up literally? I definitely Ooh. think we do to come back up. I do think we have players who I think will be plugs for this year, but maybe next season and the year after other guys will for sure come up. So I actually made a bit of a word document regarding uh, what I think the hub should do this trade uh, deadline. <laughs> and I'll uh, <laughs> go over it a bit. Yes. So I have my main assets that I kind of want to trade and I have uh, Hoffman, as I'm sure we know that I kind of want to move out that contract uh, and get whatever we can for him at this point, because okay. Suzuki's uh, extension is kicking in and Romanov is due his big boy extension. And uh, I know he only had two years on his entry level deal, but one year got burned off because he joined the team in the bubble. So I think Hoffman is someone that I think we could look to move out to. And I'm hearing rumors that Pittsburgh could be interested and Lekkanen. I know I Nick, you're not happy about potentially moving on from Lekkanen, but Frank Cervelli reported that he could fetch us a Blake Coleman rate like return and Mm -hmm. teams are willing are begging the Hobbs for him. And he does have a good contract. He has 2.3 million and he's an RFA depending on whatever team he goes to next year. He'll still be an RFA and they'll be able to extend him. I know yeah. Matthew Perot's also had injury issues, so I definitely think Pro could fetch a pick. And he had probably the most memorable night of the season when our first win against Detroit this year. Petrie, from what I'm hearing, teams right now, according to what I've read online and uh, I'm hearing, 
uh, they're willing to offer about a first and second or an A-level prospect and a B-level prospect. And I'm hearing that Dallas is an interesting suitor. And I'm hearing that rumors of potentially a first round pick in Logan Stan Coven. That would drive me absolutely mad because I, and of happiness, mad of happiness, because I was a huge fan of Logan Stan Coven wow. in the under 18s. Yeah. Sherrod, I do think that we kind of do need to move on from him as much as I like the guy. I do think it's time to sort of uh, move on from him because we have so many left-handed defensemen coming up the system. You look at it right now, we're going to have Gouli next year. We have Romanov right now. We have Harris. We have Struble. Mm-hmm. The list can go on. Also, Arbor Shot guy. We have Weidman, who I also think will be traded right uh, this deadline. He could fetch you maybe a mid-round yeah. pick. And then Cedric Paquette. Uh, I do know yeah, that uh, you, I don't think teams will, or will really be wanting him. Or even if they do, I don't think we'll have to give up much. But it's better to give up something as opposed to get him for something as opposed to nothing. So I do think those are the main guys that we got to kind of got to move. And then let the kids take over the team and... And then with those moves, I definitely think if those guys go, I definitely think you, the defense kind of looks as this Romanov, Savard. I want Romanov in the number one D roles because he'll be building yeah. up that stamina this, this season if he plays a lot more. Once Joel Edmondson gets back, because from what I'm hearing, he'll be able to uh, get back to the some time around the deadline from what I'm hearing right now. And there's not a really confirmed uh, return time for Edmondson. So I do think Edmondson should be able to return around the deadline and, be, and play a role in the second pair. And then... Kale Clegg is someone who I've really liked watching, and yeah. he's been a good power play quarterback. I can say this about Clegg. I can see him being part of the team this year and next year, but I'm not sure about the long-term future because of how many good left-handed defensemen, but he could also play the right side if needed, even though he's left-handed. And then I have Sammy Nuku and Xavier will lead on the back-end pair with all those moves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I completely agree. Uh, do we see uh, Gooley making the team next season? Personally, would- it's like... I'm hoping. Yeah. Because this like this is like a mini Shea Weber in the making, right? Yeah. Oh no, he's he's ready. Like we saw it this training camp. He was playing with the NHL players. He wasn't playing behind them. He was playing with them. So yeah. give him a, a, a year on that. No doubt about it, he'd be ready. Um, but he needs to come in a good situation though. If we're still tank mode going for Connor Bedal, I'd rather keep him in the juniors for one more year. But that if, we're, if we're in a good situation, good environment, hell yeah, bring him on. Yeah, Gouli was a monster with Savard, and uh, Savard hasn't as exactly been the best to start off, but he's gotten better. But uh, next season, if he starts out with Savard, Gouli and Savard as maybe a first or second pair, I wouldn't want to necessarily start Gouli exactly right on the top pair, giving him top pair minutes, maybe second pair next season. But he was really good yeah. with Savard. And I'm still still salty that he got snubbed from Canada because he showed that in the World Juniors and in the NHL preseason games that he can skate with the big men. Yep. Uh, sorry. They clearly have a lot to say today. Um, oh, yeah. I want to touch on this comment because it's been trending as well yesterday with the Devils being in town. You have P.K. Subban, who's a UFA at the end of the season. It has been said that he would not come back under the Mac Bergevin era in Montreal. But with Bergevin being gone, would you take P.K. back? He clearly said yesterday that Montreal will always be his home. I stated yeah. on Twitter as well that P.K. for me will always be a hab for life. His career, let's say, went a little bit downhill when he left Montreal, but would it relaunch his career to come back? And would you guys take him back at what price? That's the thing, right? He would be at a bargain because his production has drastically fell off. Like he's still being paid 9 million for what he's giving right now. So it, it looks bad, but if Kent Hughes is able to negotiate a good contract with him, for sure. For sure. Um, you know, this is a guy that will bring that good culture that we've been talking about. He's a guy that will play for the C in front and not for the name in the back. Yeah. So uh, no no doubt about it. If if we give him a good contract, you know, a couple of years, maybe two, three million, something like that. Deal. You got a deal. Yeah, I'd love to bring PK back for both the on ice and off ice reasons. Uh, for mm-hmm. example, the thing is, I know with PK, we know about the children's hospital. And I'm also part of an organization at my church called the HEPA, which we do do like we do essentially Greek. Uh, it's essentially uh, the Greeks getting involved in the community and making uh, 
making impact and change. And uh, PK Subban himself has done a lot of work with our organization. And uh, I haven't met him yet, but I know people who have. And he every year in February he sets up uh, a ballroom dance for Valentine's Day at a big ballroom in Montreal, and he donates a lot of money and. He, he does so much. He's such a good guy. I would love yeah. to have him in the locker room. And he's easily someone I'd be willing to slap an A on right away. Yeah. And uh, he and the thing is, uh, he also, uh, at this point, he's someone who no- knows the system. I mean, like, he knows, like, the system of Montreal. He knows uh, a lot of the players. He's heavily endorsed a lot of players, such as Carey Price, even when he's been, when Carey Price is going through difficult times. And it's just Subban's such a good guy that I would love to have him back. Mm -hmm. And another point too, you mentioned his relationship with Price is phenomenal, but his relationship with Galley is not great. Every time we play them, you know, they they start getting into scuffles. Uh, I don't know what their situation is off ice. You know, we're just speculating here. We don't want to assume anything, but from what we've seen, it's not that pretty. So, you know, there's just that to think about, but mm, yeah. What if... Again, speculation. What if we are going for a total rebuild here and you have Kent and Jeff who move Gallagher and you wouldn't have that conflict? Because you do have the rumor talk of Gallagher could fetch you what you need right now for a rebuild. And is he going to want to stick around with a big contract too? Obviously, I would never trade Gallagher. He's the next captain in my book. Yeah, But again... Hypothetically, if you move Gallagher, would leave room to maybe bring PK in. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> My God, that hurts. Just, maybe. just even thinking about I know, it, it's it, like it kills me. Ah, I really cannot see that guy with another jersey on. I really can't. No. Like he, he is a Montreal Canadian. He is the essence of the Habs, and and I think it would be a mistake to trade him unless the the return is is through the roof. Uh, but you know, if, if we'd have to trade Galley to bring in Subban, then no, I'm keeping Galley, of course. Uh, yeah, but yeah, it remains to be seen. If we do trade him, then hey, you know, we might as well take Subban. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's uh, kind of getting emotional because those are two of my favorite players growing up, and uh, <laughs> yeah. And yeah, the thing is, I would love to see Subban back, but I wouldn't want to see it at the expense of Galley getting traded. But I do know that uh, Galley and Subi, like, uh, like, I don't want to like get into like heavy speculation here, but I'm just gonna say like they'd probably be able to work it out because they're both very yeah. seem to be very genuine human beings. So I definitely think they could easily work something out and maybe just try to put differences aside. And mm-hmm. like, for as I'm sure we know, 24 CH, we do know that Subi had a very interesting personality, but like, I liked he his did. energy. <laughs> And I do know yeah. that with certain players, uh, the, uh, like the player in Vegas, as I'm sure we know, got traded for Suzuki, didn't seem to get along with his personality very much. But uh. that just, <laughs> yeah, that's a whole other story. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm just looking on IDS right now, and you're listing a, a list of possible candidates as coaches. So they have Benoit Gru, Pascal Vincent, Patrick Roy, Guy Boucher, and the name Martin Saint Louis has been added in the mix, oh. along with Vincent Le Cavalier. So oh. what would you guys think of having Vinny Le Cavalier or Martin Saint-Louis as wow. not only a potential coach, but would you prefer them as an assistant coach? Listen, Martin Saint-Louis was one of my favorite players growing up. I absolutely love that guy. And Nick, you were asking me earlier, who do I love? I love that guy. He is you love that guy? fantastic, okay, fantastic person, fantastic hockey player. The, the hockey IQ, right? That's the main thing for this guy. Okay, he's fast, got good hands, whatever. But the hockey IQ is through the roof. This guy is so smart. So if he can, you know, bring that to the table, give that to the young guys, I am all for it. Even though he doesn't have experience coaching at NHL level, I wouldn't care one bit. If we can get Martin Saint-Louis on, I'm sold. I'm sold. That's, that just made my week, you know, made my year. Screw it. <laughs> No, I don't even know what to say about this. A few years ago in 2008, we nearly threw in the kitchen sink for Vincent LeCavalier. I remember we offered a first oh, round yeah. pick. Carey yeah. Price, P.K. Subban, Max Pacioretty, all for LeCavalier and Tampa Bay said no. They may have yeah. got their two cups, but that was the biggest mistake, in my opinion, Tampa Bay made. Mm-hmm. But 
Yeah, definitely. I'd love to have him. His, his hockey IQ is off the charts. World Cup player, Olympic gold medal. I don't think he was a. a I'm pretty sure he was a gold medalist in uh, 2002. Correct me if I'm wrong. There, he is has I just such so. a good resume. Yeah. Uh, Mar- Mar- uh, Vincent Le Cavalier, both of them have great ho- hockey resumes, especially Le Cavalier and Saint Louis. They both have great resumes, and I definitely think for someone such as Suzuki, he could learn a lot from Le Cavalier, and also Caulfield could learn a lot from Saint Louis for them be- both being a little undersized to their typical forwards. So, I would love for that. I now that I think more, I think about it now, right on the spot, that those two, Le Cavalier, would be a big help to Suzuki. And then uh, then uh, San Luis would be a major help to Caulfield. Mm-hmm. 100%. Yep. And uh, another rumor mill, I guess we could say, trending right now is that the Calgary Flames have the most interest in Tyler Toffoli. Would you move Tyler Toffoli at the right price? Or is this the type of player that you would keep for your rebuild and have the experience? And he's playing great. What would you guys do when it comes to Tyler Toffoli? Yeah, once again, I think the team would have to overpay to get to Foley because we don't actually need to trade him. He yeah. fits well with the team. And and yesterday, I want to give him a big shout out because somebody touched uh, uh, Primo. It wasn't hard. It wasn't anything crazy. But to Foley was that guy to jump on him, right? He didn't just stand by. He jumped on that guy. So uh, to Foley is a leader and, and he gels well with the team. He's got good relationships with the boys. Uh, so I, I really wouldn't move him unless... The offer is just, you can't pass it up, right? Yeah. Uh, go ahead, Damon. Sorry. Yeah, I was just going to say that definitely the thing is with Calgary is, uh, I know Calgary's essentially been the definition of mediocrity in uh, pro sports. And for those of you who don't watch Urinating Tree, he's made so many hilarious videos about how they're uh, <laughs> mediocrity. But yeah, if Calgary is going to do this, they definitely have to give us some good prospects. I could see maybe Connor Zeri coming to Montreal in the trade or Jacob Pelche or Ooh. Matthew Ooh. Coronado. They have a lot of intriguing prospects that I do think I would like to have on the Hobbs. In my opinion, Calgary should just build around the young guys, just Kachak, Majiapani, Elias Lindholm, and the young guys, instead of being mediocre for all this. And yeah, but if they're going to go all in, which I do think they need another piece, and Tyler Toffoli or Lekkonen could be that piece. So I would definitely move him at the right price. But Tyler Toffoli has said in multiple interviews and meets with the media, he said, I want to be a hub. I was born to be a hub. Exactly. And uh, he said, you whatever. Pardon? You don't trade that type of. No. Uh... I don't trade that type of guy. Yeah. And no. uh, he said, depending on whatever our, I remember I heard him say, whatever our word is, whether it's rebuild, retool, reset, I want to be part of it. I want to be part of the solution here. And Tyler yeah. Toffoli is just that guy. I'd love to have part of the solution. Yeah. Agreed. Um, we have a legendary guest that's going to hop on with us. He has some comments to be made, so please welcome Andrew Thompson, a.k.a. Drew Deeks. Deeksy! Did, did you call me a legend again? I did oh, yeah. call you a legend, you legend. Uh, you know what? I'll take Screw it. it, you're a legend. I'll take it. Yeah, you better. <laughs> How's it going, buddy? Good, good. Did I miss anything? Uh, <laughs> Sham got fired, did you know? What? What? Yeah. How relieved yeah. are you right now? I'm not going to comment on that. How okay, relieved fine. are you? We won't put you on the spot. I'll just no, DM you don't. later. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. I don't thoughts? have my lights. I don't have my lights or anything set up, but I just uh, I got oh, my mic and my It looks pathetic. You should be ashamed. Yeah, you know what? Screw you guys. You know what? I could find another Habs tonight. No, I can't. Um, you guys are the one and only. I'm just kidding. So I'm, I'm kidding, guys. Lighten up. I, I know you're all upset about Ducharme leaving. Okay, I'll settle down okay. there. Settle down. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. That's the joke. That's the joke. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to make an announcement live on the Habs Tonight Show that your new head coach of the Montreal Canadiens is, in fact, uh, me. Yes, Drew Deeks. So I uh, can't speak French, but uh, the boys are going to listen to me. Let's go. I'm going to translate for you. All right. Perfect head coach. You know what? You go. They're already fired up. They're already fired up. I only had to say one thing to them, and that was uh, mm-hmm. Shane Wright. Uh, and th- no, th- I'm kidding. Never mind. Um, plan the parade. Plan the parade, and then cancel it. It was three one. Um, no, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 boom. ready to go. Ready to go. Yeah, you're but, fired uh, up. Love it. I, I don't know. Like we, we have almost a half season left, right? So it's uh, 
Martin St. Louis as as head, new head coach. Yeah, well, we've already tried one new head coach, so let's let's pump the brakes on that. Although uh, <laughs> St. Louis, mm, I, I wouldn't hate it if he was like an assistant or something. But yeah, um, but I mean, like Luke Richards, we could see the Randy Cunningworth situation repeat itself. I mean, Luke, I don't know, like putting him on the like uh, having the press just randomly request him today, and then Jashar gets fired hours later is pretty weird. So yeah. you got to wonder. But you he know, was at practice, what like, what, 45 minutes before? <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, Deshaun <laughs> was at practice, but um, I don't know. It, it's weird. Like, this kind of – it's one of those things with Bergevin, too. It was like, okay, they're kind of just now sort of replace, starting to replace the pieces that Bergevin hired or, or signed, right? So this is kind of another stepping stone for, for the team. But, like – how important is the head coach at this stage, especially not very, I don't think, but uh, clearly after Brendan Gallagher made his mar- remarks the other day about how he hasn't had the same line mates for two games in a row, not unlike the Canadians haven't won two games in a row either. Um, but when, when Gallagher <laughs> says that though, like he, and if he's going to stick around for the rebuild, which he said he yeah. very well may be. So that, that uh, caught my ear when uh, when Galley said that. So I think that, that the writing was kind of on the wall there. It was like, okay, if he's taking a quiet shot at Ducharme, then uh, you know that Jeff Gordon and uh, Ken Hughes are listening to that, right? Um, just to touch here, because I've been scrolling Twitter nonstop. Mm-hmm. So yeah. uh, you've got Marc-Olivier Baudouin here, who is a, let's call him a journalist independently. Let's put it that way. Uh, he's been pretty spot on with his uh, rumors and everything. And he's saying that he was told that Martin Saint-Louis would be the new head coach of the Montreal Canadiens unless a major situation changes, which should be announced soon. And it what? will be an interim situation. So that is the latest rumor. Do not quote me that it's happening. But that seems to be what's trending right we now. We need a banner for this. Go ahead, Dixie. You're huh. good at banners. Yeah, you guys go ahead. I'll just be on the side working away. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm trying to process this one because say that we as an interim position, that means they what he's just staying until the end of the season and they, they see what he can do. I mean but I guess it's that. good. Instead of just slapping him a three year contract without you know any proof that he can do the job. But uh okay. Yeah, but you take a look at what Dusham did. Dusham was doing good yeah, at the playoffs it. and then he was like, interim. It's basically like a repeat situation or do you put him as interim and then you clear the bench as we said at the beginning of the show do you clear the bench at the end of the season and you put Martin Saint-Louis as an assistant coach tough call because then what do you do with well no okay if you clear the bench with you... Trevor Latowski would be gone <laughs> Trevor yeah. Latowski gets gets hired gets fired right away um <laughs> poor guy but that's huh okay I really don't know what to think of this. Like, I'm I'm, I'm a big fan of Martin Saint Louis. Like I said, I would yeah love to see what what he could do with the team. But as an interim position, I'm not sure. I don't know. Could be a good move. Yeah, it is very very interesting. Mm-hmm. And then you have people you heard saying it here that it's first. Rod Like Rod Brandon is not going to leave. No, you, heard yeah. first, you heard it here first. You heard it here first from Marc Olivier Baudouin. Um, Was he the one that yeah, dropped the rumor about? Ducharme's firing earlier today? Was that him? Yeah, he did. Jean-Charles Lajoie. And Baudouin too. Mm. Baudouin posted it, but Baudouin is also reporting for Dany Coulis, which I don't trust with my life. But, you know, you you never know. know. We can't even, some of us can't even read French, so. Yeah. (laughs) So I try my best, you know. I try. Uh, I don't know. It's interesting. There's so many questions right now. More questions than answers. Mm -hmm. It's... Um, DC, we talked about this earlier here. Um, want to get your opinion on it of, would you do a full on coach right now? Or would you do just an interim and then go with a full on coach next season? Interim isn't a bad thing. It's basically the same situation that that they brought Dom in on last year. Right. So, um, you know, he comes in as interim head coach. They go to the Stanley cup run on Stanley cup run. Surprisingly, and they can't get rid of him at that point. So um, mm-hmm. at this point, they know it's going to be somebody's got to fill the position, right? So yeah. if you bring in Martin St. Louis, if he's, you know, the rumored perspective, wh- whoever it is, even if it's Luke, um, it's not going to, it's not really 
like w- what team do you have playing for you really like that's the other thing too like dom was dealt a bad hand no matter no matter how good or bad of a coach he is this team is beyond decimated and has the worst luck we've ever seen in hockey maybe sports yep. this season so that being said like what the heck do you expect from any coach right now so so I mean, uh, bringing an interim coach, if it's Martin St. Louis, try him out, see how he does as a head coach. He's a passionate, passionate hockey player, very talented hockey player from the past, of course, Mm -hmm. and uh, a Quebec native, right? So if I'm not mistaken, is is St. Louis from Quebec? I mean, I I think so, yeah. yeah. Perfectly bilingual. I was pretty sure, but when you're live, you're like, I better be right about this. No, 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 for sure. No, that's yeah. it. He, I mean, he played in Tampa for quite some time and then New York. So his English is, is fine as well. Uh, probably better than Dushams. Uh Dushams communication was, was pretty rough, I found. So, you know, being a player, I don't know how they received his message. Uh, that's, yeah. that was probably another issue, but probably because they yeah. couldn't hear him because he's the most monotone, <laughs> soft spoken coach what? in the friggin' history of the Canadians. Yeah. Definitely. That's probably part of the issue there but for those that are tuning in by the way uh be sure to uh to like and subscribe uh if this is your first time with us some of you guys are of course um uh subscribers and and fo- and followers of our show but uh, please do smash the like button it does help to put us out there even more so and then hit the subscribe button if you're enjoying the show and you're and you're participating in the show as you guys see you're firing in all your comments we appreciate that so be sure to do that um to plug myself a little bit here i will be doing like a brief re- reaction video on my channel I'm, I'm just gearing up my drew D youtube channel again so please uh, please support me as well uh the team is going to jump on for videos here and there throughout the season but uh a little shameless plug for me if you guys want to follow along with me too definitely 100%. do that worth worth the yeah. follow um, <laughs> so, and, yeah thank you thank you, you know, appreciate the, that I, I feel like the thing with the the firing again circling back to that is is Okay, there's there's a difference between only winning eight games in a, in half a season and losing most of them by a margin of five to six goals. Like that is yeah. unacceptable. No matter what team you have on the ice, those are still NHL caliber players, and you can't inspire yeah. them. You can't give them the tools that they need in order to compete. Now it's not even a game anymore. It's just okay. Who's gonna ramsack the Habs tonight? Who's gonna stat uh, pa- stat pad? tonight against the Habs like who's gonna get a hat trick you know it's not even a competition anymore we don't even bring it to overtime we can't even bring it to a one goal margin we get smoked seven to one most of the time so at, at, at a certain point there must be a breaking point like you can't just keep doing that yeah exactly. I want to pull yeah, up that's a good point I'm just going to touch on Allen quickly just for a second, because I'm sure we know when Allen was healthy, the games were much more closer in margin, but just he never got the goal support. But now with him out and Price out and uh, the defense leaving the goalies out to dry, like this is pretty much the big reason why it's like 7-1 and 35 goals in uh, the past five games. It's uh, very like it. That just makes me cringe every day I go to bed. (laughs) That's not fun. You got something Um, over there, Nick, or what? Yeah, I wanted to pull up this picture that I saw because we're we're not only getting uh, you know trashed by the entire league for sucking, but we're getting trashed by Yahoo Sports now. And I wanted I to, to share this photo from this morning of this is basically what happens from every team when they play against Montreal. Yeah, <laughs> basically what Wait, that's it is. funny. Okay, that's funny. It, it's absolutely yeah. hilarious. <laughs> yeah. it's if true. you're gonna get chirped by w- using the great one, it's fine. It's if, it, if, it, if this was I Brad Marchand, I would want to punch every one of you in the teeth. Uh, well. So that's that's fine. But Wayne Gretzky's cool. You can you yeah. can chirp us with, with even the double IHF did the same lore thing to us. They did their power ranking rankings for the men's uh, international team, and then they had China lost. And they said if this was the NHL, China would be the Habs. Yeah, I think China no, would be better than that. the Habs. They do have a few of the former the women. Colors. The women would destroy the Canadians right now. The Canadian Olympic 100%. Women's team. Oh, oh hell my yeah. gosh. They would <laughs> not just, even close. They would make us look even more like that. sissies. But I just showed it to the women. They're killing it. So um mm-hmm. yeah, it's absolutely what was fantastic that? to watch. Are you getting texts from are you getting texts from Kent Hughes right now, uh, Nick? What's going <laughs> yeah, on? apparently, you know. <laughs> We'd all support you if you didn't have a high job. job. You got something to tell us? Just an insider. Out. I can't tell you. I'm sworn to secrecy. Um, Why? Yeah, Fine. It, it, it remains to be. I, I'll DM you. No, um, <laughs> I am not this? an insider. You can stop DMing me on Twitter for uh, additional inside information. I do not have the information. If I would, I would totally leak it. 
I would be that <laughs> asshole. You, you would You'd be, be the Frank Cervalli of the expansion. Draft? I would be that oh, yeah. person. I love I how Cervalli totally just like it. made sure that he was first on it too. Like, hmm. you yep. know. hope you all enjoyed the show. I remember he said after the expansion draft was John. It's like you ruined it for everyone, buddy. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's gosh. like yeah, well, just doing yeah. my job. <laughs> um. Listen, we do not have any more news to give you guys. Unfortunately, uh, it's going to be released in the next few hours. I keep scrolling here and we do have one person with a little blue check mark who said that every 30 minutes, it's a brand new person that's named GM. So, and it's five different names. Welcome to the Montreal media. It is what it is. Um, again, want to remember for you guys to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel and get your Habs Tonight gear uh, right here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, habstonight.net. There, there it is at the There you go. Thanks, DC. Um, Anytime. Get your Habs Tonight merch. Uh, we got some brand new stuff coming every week, mostly. And uh, yeah, I don't know if you guys have some final touches that you want to just say, one, but... Just a fun one. Why not for the rest of the season? Since we know he's a diehard Habs fan, Jay Birchall for the fun of it as the interim. You know what? That's a great oh. thought, Damon, but he will he has not answered. He didn't answer Dale Weiss's direct messages, so he's probably not answering ours. So Ah, yeah. pick up your phone, Jay. Let's go. Stop it. Stop acting. Damn. Stop acting so Hollywood. It's annoying. <laughs> Called out. <laughs> Exposed. I don't care. Like answer yeah, your phone. Yeah. When when a Montreal Canadian player sends you a message, you don't ignore it. Wake up, man. Come on. Especially mm-hmm. a Dutch Gretzky. It's just disrespectful. Yeah. Not cool. Pure not disrespect. Cool. And, and Dale. Someone suggested Dale as head coach. Dale wants to, would rather be a GM than a coach, so that's not happening. Um, he's still playing. So for those that don't remember, he's in Sweden. New GM playing speculation. With- Playing nine games a week. Yeah. <laughs> New GM speculation every day. Already. You heard it here first. <laughs> That's you heard it for GM in the future. Oh, no. First. Um, but yeah, cool. like 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 I mentioned a moment ago, um, I don't know if we'll be jumping on for another live one later, but I'll be on my channel later if you guys want to jump on. Uh, I don't know if I'm going live. I don't think so. But uh, but anyway, if you guys want to support the Drew Deeks channel, appreciate it. And then uh, like Nick mentioned, uh, smash like, subscribe, habstonight.net for your merch. And uh, we'll have a new head coach anytime now, ladies and gentlemen. If, uh, if it's not too late, maybe we'll jump on. If not, sometime this week, we will jump on and give you guys the the news and an official report of our thoughts. So yeah, for yeah. now, thank you so much for the over 300 of you that actually have hopped on in the middle of the day. Well, not really middle of the day, but have left your seats from work and joined us for some good old hockey talk. Thank you so much, you guys. Boys, thank you, thank you for joining here. And uh, we shall speak to you guys later on this week or later on tonight. Cheers, guys. Right on. See you at the next press conference. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>